fine. I'm fine. I'm, I'm very happy that this uh, finally gets to be broadcast in the UK. Well, I am I mean, too. It's not on television. It is, it is this way. They are still negotiating whether, I mean, we're in touch with people from Ireland um, that are interested in the movie. Uh, it, has been broke, it has been seen. Uh, okay, in we're, 13, 13 we're on. So whatever you say now, it's, it's live. Okay. <laughs> so no okay. secret okay. anymore. <laughs> has to go through a revolution. A revolution. A revolution. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi everyone uh, attending this Q and A um, for Endgame: Breaking the Silence. You've been watching the documentary, and uh, we're now uh, starting um, the, the, the live Q&A. So I would like to welcome Pierre-Emmanuel Luno de Rignac, the director of the film. Welcome, Pierre-Emmanuel. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very um, much for having me. With us, we also have two of the protagonists of the film, Karen Leach is a former swimmer and person with lived experience of child sexual abuse, and now one of the leading voices in international work against sexual abuse and harassment in sport. And Paul Stewart, a former football legend and a survivor of abuse. So let's start from uh, Pierre Emmanuel. Um, thanks, first of all, for this incredibly powerful doc, hard to digest, very hard to digest, tough, tough documentary. Um, I'd like to ask you what led you to make it in the first place, because you were, you were following a, um, a story, you're a journalist and following this story, um, and then you decided to make a doc this documentary. Why was that? What led you to it? Um, uh, very concretely, actually, I was working in, uh, in a TV show, um, news TV program, French news TV program, which is the equivalent of Panorama in France. It was almost 10 years ago, and uh, there was a, a huge story at that time, had a, um, a, a huge impact in France as well. Everybody was using the same terms that they are using nowadays, like uh, at the end of the, the end, of the, the people need to break the, the law of silence and so on. And everybody thought that, oh my God, everybody's going to talk about it. And, and actually no one did, little, little by little, year after years, the whole story vanished and uh, the whole impact of the first uh, report that I did at that time, it was 2009, um, well, turned into nothing. And uh, it was like business as usual afterwards. And then I heard of the Nassar case and what took place in the UK. And then I told myself, well, of course, I knew, I knew for a long time this was a global phenomenon, but I told myself maybe it's worth trying to do something international and uh, something in, uh, involving many sports, different sports to, to show people that the, there is a mechanism at work which remains the same regardless of the country and uh, regardless of the sport itself. So this is what we did. And uh, I started uh, thinking about it in 2017 started right about it actually after uh, i mean the nassar story is september 2016 and uh, your your story poll and uh wood war story is uh, is november 16 of november with the with the the, the guardian uh, article so i started like in the months right after it took me a lot of time to not to convince necessarily arte the, the french tv channel german french and neither the producer, it took me a lot of time to work and to try to, to organize my thoughts and, and, and what was the more efficient in terms of explaining the, the, the process as clearly as possible when we know that there are so many, many stories and so many cases. And in the end, uh, what is both strong and scary is to realize that in fact, it's almost always the same story. It's always the same sentences that I heard. Uh, my parents believed him. Uh, I thought that if I, if, if I speak, I would, I would lose my whole career. I mean, those words, you can take them in, 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 uh, in Ireland, in, uh, <coughs> in swimming or in uh, soccer in, in England or gymnastic in, in, in Spain. So, I, I feel like watching your, uh, your film, um, 
uh, a few of the survivors, one of a point in common among all the, a few of the survivors that you have interviewed, um, it's uh, the passion for them now on making sure that this doesn't happen again. So why, what was uh, the reason for them to accept, to talk to you? Why you, how did you proceed to approach them what was the process of building the trust? Honesty. I think that was what, what is very, uh, what I realized uh, early on is that uh, talking about something that is as painful as what happened to them uh, makes them go through the whole process again. Of course, That's exactly. what I thought, process. yes. It must be very painful. So, so asking them to talk you have to reassure them that it first is going to be worth it, that you're working hard, that you're honest uh, in terms of like how you want to you, you want to do the film, like the spirit, the philosophy of the film, and uh, and I think honestly, uh, I, I had to be frank, I had to be direct, I had to I don't know. I think I've uh, I think I. Uh, I don't know. I was, I was, I grew up with a child psychotherapist, and I think I, I heard since I'm 16 years old and I'm 50 now. So my whole life, I heard stories of sexual abuse and 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 stories of this kind. So I was, um, I always felt that I had some keys here and there of understanding the, a little bit of the mechanism of the, the the damages it could do and the way to react to those damages. A little bit, but otherwise, I don't know. Uh, you just you just spend time. You listen and respect, and 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 you're careful with the work that you're going to do. And if you ask them to go through this whole process of talking to you and going public again, you you don't ask that from them for nothing. Yes, it's not an easy um, task. Um, so I'd like to hear something from them now, uh, Karen. Welcome to Raindance. Um, so after surviving the abuse as a, as a young swimmer, you've become one of the leading voices internationally against sexual abuse in sport. Um, can you tell us what your current work entails? And very importantly, how the voices of those with these kind of experience uh, can help bring change to sport across the world and keep athletes safer in sports now? Yeah. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, I suppose I, I've been speaking out around child sexual abuse in sports for over 10 years now. And um, I mean, even after the documentary that, that you've been shown this evening, you know, what's in it, uh, I, one of the really important things to say is, you know, this is not uh, the past, this is not about the yesterdays, you know, what Pierre has put together and what has been shown is reality, it's the truth, and it's it's still happening today um, across the world, you know, it, it's still there. So this work that, that we're doing this evening, and what Paul does, myself and Pierre, and, and many of the other voices across the world, is so so important. Um, I am an ambassador for Voice. It's a project in Europe. In Europe, it's um, it was it's it's combating sexual violence in Europe through um, working with the voices of those that have been affected. I'm a member of the Sport England advisory panel, and I'm on the pool of European experts on sexual violence um, in sport. Um, and I sit on, on, on many other groups and I work with many organizations closely like Safe Sports International, the NWG in the United Kingdom, um, Harvard and the Norwegian Olympic Committee in Norway. And um, it's really important that they hear from the voices with lived experience. You know, I, I'm not just, or either is Paul, you know, or, or the people that were on this documentary. We're not just about the art, the abuse that happened to us as a child. We're not just abuse stories. We have a wealth of knowledge and a life experience that we can offer organizations. From the age of 10 years of age, up until tonight, this very evening that I'm speaking into, into the laptop, um, 
I have so much to offer and, and to share and to work with organizations to help them um, implement, uh, you know, policies and procedures, guidelines, laws, to educate, to train, to consult, you know, what um, the voices of, you know, myself and others have to offer. It, you won't read it in a book. It's not in a book. You know, we, we speak from the side of, of how it started, you know, being groomed as children, the hold that our coaches had on us, you know, the whole thing right up until the very end. For me, I had a dream as a little girl and, and that dream was to swim for Ireland in the Olympics. And the Irish Olympic coach told me he was going to make my dream come true. And, and he sold it to me. He sold it to my parents. He had, you know... I, total control over my life uh, you know and it, the one thing and more that I speak to people um, in Ireland the United Kingdom and across the world I realize that many people really don't understand the full picture of abuse and they don't actually realize how easy this can happen you know people that want to abuse children don't have a sticker on their head they're not walking around with this sign saying hey you know I want to abuse children they're just the same. They're, they're, they're the same as me and you or, or, or anybody walking around. But the thing about it is, you know, they want to abuse children. So they make their way towards sports because sports is an easy access to children. And that's where and how the abuse takes place. So, you know, when I'm saying about for organizations, governments, clubs to engage with us, the voices of lived experience, you know, you must, you know, let us in, let us be there. We have so much knowledge to share and communicating with parents and children, everybody, coaches, officials, CEOs, from the top right down to the bottom level in grassroots, from grassroots to elites. Uh, you know, it, it is about working and sharing knowledge, working together on the same page, all of us together, to ensure that what happened to us as children, you know, is not going to continue into the future. Thank you, Karen. That's that's oh, scary, really scary. Um, I just want to, we'll go back to that uh, in a monument, but I wanted to hear from Paul as well, because Paul, you've been an incredibly successful footballer. Uh, you managed to build a unique life and uh, a very successful professional uh, career after surviving the horror. So what has given you strength in these years? Um, good evening, everyone. It, it's difficult really to say what gives you the strength. I mean, the desire to be a footballer was, was always there. And the fact that um, the control and the abuse um, was something that became part of me becoming a footballer. I believed that my coach had the power to give and to take away that opportunity to become a footballer. So um, you, 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 you want to realize your dream. Um, you're worried that if you do say something that A, maybe you won't be believed and, and, and B, that you will lose uh, the opportunity to, to progress in sport. So the, the, the coaches have um, a lot of power, uh, which is the main problem. When children believe that a, that a coach of any, any sport has that uh, power to give and take away um, your, your dream, then as, as a young child, you will, you will conform and, and, and accept the abuse um, uh, because you are, you, you know, you, you, you're desperate to, to achieve your goals. And that's, that's one of the biggest problems. And when, when Pierre was talking before and, and you know, I, I, I've listened to Karen on numerous occasions, it, it is, it's, you know, you can talk to a footballer, you can talk to a swimmer, gymnast, you look at the MO, it's always the same. The grooming starts and then the, the isolation starts where, where they've got you alone. They, they, the parents trust them. You know, they, they, they're like long lost uncles. I mean, and, and, and aunties, these people, they're not, 
they're not what we believe to be um, in rain max and 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 you know uh, typically what they are portrayed in, in in newspapers and on TV. These are regular people, very educated people, and and we have to understand that as hard as we are trying to stop them accessing our children, they are trying twice as hard to access the, the children because they know that sport is an opportunity. Um, they will identify uh, organisations that don't have uh, the right policies and procedures in place, and they will inf infiltrate them organisations. So, you know, the, the job that Karen and I and, and a lot of our colleagues are trying to do is make sure that where possible we can we can put procedures policies in place so that it's very very difficult for them to to access our children because as as i said um they they identify organizations where they, they haven't got a, a good safeguarding um, regime and they will infiltrate them organizations a question that to both of you actually because hearing you talk it's it's like it's terrifying because these look like normal people but what how do you uh do you see signs of this happening how can you from from some someone from external let's say a parent or a, um, a relative, some, someone close to the victim, are there signs that can be spotted? Are there ways to, uh, first of all, see that this is going on and then help? To both of you, whoever wants to talk first. I suppose the, the most important thing to remember, really kind of follow on to what Paul just said there is, these people are really, really good at what they're doing. And, and it's not, you know, they don't just start today and, you know, tomorrow it's over. They, they start, uh, you know, a, a process of, you know, pulling everybody in, you know, pulling your family, pulling your, like for me, my mom and dad totally trusted this, you know, the, he was the Irish Olympic coach and he kept saying who he was and he was the best in Ireland and he told us many, many times, you know, so I, I suppose the thing for me when I was a little girl, you know, nobody, I, I didn't know what abuse was, I didn't understand what was happening and um, nobody spoke to me, nobody told me that I could ask for help, um, there was no safeguarding policies and procedures in place when I I was a little girl and I'm sure Paul similar to yourself I, I mean thank God a lot of things have changed but for me the most important thing is is I, I, re, later in life I've had so many people come up to me evolved still in Irish sport and have said to me oh you know Karen oh I didn't like him thought he was a bit dodgy oh wasn't sure about him and, and, and I'm standing there looking at these people and they're saying this to me and I'm thinking why didn't you do something why didn't you say something? Why didn't you help me? You could have saved my life. And they didn't. They did nothing. So I suppose what I will be saying to people that are listening, if you think or feel or see or know something is happening to a child, a young person, adult at risk, any athlete, please do something. Say something. Don't ignore it. A lot of the times we think, oh, no, that's it's something small. Not really. It doesn't really matter. Every little thing matters. The small things that you might think does not matter. It matters to that child or young person. They are being hurt and they are being abused and their lives are being destroyed. So if you know something and you see something, please say something, do something about it. Don't leave that child or young person there to be continually abused or follow up. And I think if you in, in, in the documentary, and especially if you go back to the very beginning in relation to the swimming, when, when you know, about how the coach was holding a you know the lead and the, and, mm. uh, for, and parents were there they were standing there they were watching they did nothing they said some of them said something and that's another thing if you say something and you're still not being listened to please go to someone else do something do not let that continue because remember these people that want to abuse children they are pushing the boundaries they are chancing their arm they are try seeing how far they can go and each day and each little step is leading to the big step 
So the small things are the, as important as the big things. This is about embedding a culture of safety everywhere. And this is why it's so important. You cannot remain silent about this anymore. I have, um, thank you, Karen. Uh, I have another question from Bernie Priestley. Uh, to both Karen and Paul, um, uh, so you both spoke about the power of the coach. How can we change that culture of power? Well, we have to change it. I mean, we, we have to give the child a voice and we have to make sure that that child does not believe that if he speaks or she speaks up, that it's going to damage uh, any progression they have in whatever uh, sport or hobby that they're um, they're pursuing, and for me that is that is one of the, the the major things. Give the child a voice, but also make sure that the environment that they're in is an environment where they can speak, and 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 there is no fear of the coach not picking them, not playing them, um, and 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 then. And then the power will go from the coach because the children know they can speak up. And I agree with what Karen said uh, very much on the on the um, the the spot in signs or or little things that happen. Um, and I say it an awful lot when I'm working with football clubs now and schools that I don't care if you report anything that you think might be quite strange, minor as it may be. And if it ends up not being a problem, I don't care. The fact is, if you spot something and you think, oh, I'm not going to say anything about that, it might be just me, and that, that escalates, it becomes too late. You know, it becomes too late for that child who is being abused that has to then go into adult life, and it ruins the rest of the life. Yeah. So I think it's very important that, that people that, that, that are... Uh, in charge of these 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 organisations, look and and say that you know we want the child to have a voice, and we also, if anybody suspects anything or sees anything untoward, then please come and and report it to us. And I, can I just also come in there and just say how important, back again to talking about this, like what Paul said, but how important it is for clubs and organisations, there's policies and procedures there, but many times young people are young, involved in sport and parents don't really understand them, don't, aren't really aware of them, it's not communicated to them. The more we talk actually about abuse and the more that people understand it, the clearer it is and it starts to break down the silence, it starts to remove the barriers, it also starts to remove the shame that's been put there by others on on everybody because a lot of people it's the one subject no one wants to talk about is no. child abuse and it is the one subject we have got to talk about and it's about educating our young people everybody involved in sport and like what paul said giving young people children everybody involved in sport a voice and the most important thing is when they do use that voice it is about listening to understand them and hearing them it is not about listening to reply and telling them what you think okay can i say something here please pierre Emmanuel, go ahead um Children don't speak. When they are victims, they don't speak. And the horror Karen went through, um, and what we learn is that she doesn't speak because, because of the risk, because the parents can't, most of parents can't handle uh, the fact that they weren't able to, to, to help their child. So it is not the, the job of the children to, uh, yeah. we, we, I mean, of course, of course, of course, we need to teach them to respect their body, what is allowed that an adult do to them or not. Of course, all this is extremely important, of course. But if anything happened, I don't think that there are a lot of children who can, who can, who can defend themselves and who can talk. Yeah. Um, and, and we know, and all of the work of Celia Brackenridge uh, and all of uh, academic experts show is that the more they wait, they wait, the more guilty they feel. And the more guilty they feel, the less they talk. So either they say no right away, either it's dead. So what is extremely important here, I think, is that there is a lot and a tremendous work and a very sensitive work to do 
be to for for uh, sports federations, sports clubs, and, and national governing bodies, it is their duty to reassure the parents. Parents don't have to feel guilty. I am the father of two children. I have a son who went uh, for a tennis class during the, the the recent holidays during a week, and even me, after I worked during three years on this topic, I felt embarrassed of asking, well. Do, do, uh, well, the, the tennis teacher my, uh, that, that you're offering, uh, uh, it, it, does he have like a proper, uh, a proper diploma? Uh, did you check a little bit about where, where, what he did before? Where does it come from? I felt embarrassed myself. I did it, of yeah. course, because I know what is at stake, but I felt embarrassed. I felt embarrassed in spite of that. So I should now, when you know what is at stake. So it is extremely important and it's extremely simple for many instances for governments, for the IOC, for those who can do this, to, uh, to, to ask right away, tomorrow morning, to Federation, to put on their website, it depends on the country, I know uh, UK is more advanced than France, for instance, or many other countries, but you have to have access to the diploma and to the background checks that has been done on the people uh, who will take care of your children. And I guess sometimes it's not, even, it's not even enough because you have very qualified people that do uh, abuse kids. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. It's, it, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying about the problem of qualification. Of course they are qualified. It's also the background check. And also if anything happens, they have, they have to say it right away. And that's extremely important uh, that they have to be uh, able to, to talk right away about what happens. And... Um, if there, it's, it's also, I mean, when something happens in a club, most of the time, the people, you know, I mean, if they're really careful, if you, I mean, all those, those uh, actions have to be uh, uh, implemented in the same time. I'm talking about preventions, about uh, uh, raising awareness for children, for parents, for federations, all the processes for federation to be able to, um, um, to know what type of, what, what, what um, um, gesture they can do, what they what they are allowed to, uh, like uh, massages, for instance, for uh, for um, a, a a coach, are they allowed or not? Mm -hmm. Actually, the answer is no. Uh, well, when all this is implemented together, then you have like a net of a safety net of measures that 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 that, and the consequence of the, of this is like when you ask right away, uh, well. Who is this man? Uh, what is he doing? Uh, then, when you have the answer to this, well, you you have a level of safety that is ten times much higher than when you, when you don't have it. I don't know if I'm super clear yes, here. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And can I just I, I emphasize what what Pierre said there about yes, children? Sure. It is not up to children to tell. It, this it, it is nothing to do with children telling. It is up to us adults. Every single adult involved in sports to make sure they're safe, to make sure that the culture, you know, of safety is there and, and that everything, policies and procedures are there to keep everybody safe from grassroots to, to the CEO at the top. But it is adults behavior and how they act and how they behave is what stops abuse, not just the policies and procedures. So just to, it's so important for everybody to hear this. It is not up to children to tell. Myself and Paul and everybody, we, I, I couldn't tell. I, I couldn't. I was too scared. I didn't know what was going on. I wouldn't have, he would have put me off the A team. I'd have been thrown out. Of the God, I mean, I couldn't. I didn't tell until he was in prison. And when I was actually um, giving my statement to the Irish guards, the police here in Ireland, they said to me, Karen, we are going to have to go and see him in prison and go through your statement with him. And I turned around to them and said, you can't tell him I've told you. The ma he was in prison and I was still frightened and I, I said you can't tell him I've told you I wouldn't sign the statement and it took them hours to, to, to calm me down so it's not up to children to tell it's up to us every single adult across the world to keep our children safe and to raise awareness and understand that they know that they can reach out and ask for help I have a, a, uh, I, I'm sorry. a few questions from the audience but yeah I, I, very fast. I didn't answer to you very clearly. You were like, uh, oh, but qualification is not enough. Of course, no. So what, what I didn't say that they have to show and to, to implement a, 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 a whole package of measures 
inside the club and show that they do it. So when you are a parent and you go to a, to a club and you, 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 and you ask for those for what is implemented there, they have to show it. They have to yeah. tell you right away, this is what we do. We do a background check, we check their diploma, we, uh, we talk to them regularly to see how psychologically uh, they work. We, have to, we know that the measures like, like for instance, like traveling with, uh, with children alone in a car at night is forbidden. When they go uh, to a competition, they don't share the same room in hotels. I mean, this is what we do. And they have, it's up to the clubs and to the federation yeah. to show that to the parents, because today it's a shame that parents don't dare to ask. Sorry. Um, I have a question from the audience uh, regarding parents, actually. Uh, parents feel that if they speak up, it will have, it may have a negative impact on their child. What is the best way for a parent to say something anonym anonymously without having a negative impact on the child? It's exactly well, what you were raising, Karen. Well, I, just from my point of view, I, I, you know what, if we have to get over this yeah. uh, where we're saying parents um, feel that it might be a negative impact. We're talking about children's safety here. So as parents, they shouldn't be thinking about speaking up anonymously. If there is an issue and they know there is an issue, then they, are, you know, they have a duty of care to speak up about that issue and and as if we carry on trying to find ways around um, whether or not a parent or, or an adult or a carer should speak up because they're, 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 they're sort of feared what might happen to the child or their own child in terms of, 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 of progressing, then we're never going to get around the issue that we've got because as I've said initially, coaches, um, abusive people, they recognize organizations that don't have the right policies, the right procedures in place, and they will infiltrate them organization. Thank you, Paul. Uh, we do have another question from the audience. Um, so the boundaries between normal coaching and child abuse sometimes can be blurred to the victim itself. How do you how do you spot them? How do you set the boundary? Hmm. Difficult question. Um, um, there, are, there, there is the law. In each country, there are laws. So there are things that are forbidden, things that are allowed. Uh, for instance, I was talking earlier about massages. I think yeah, that massages yeah. must not be made by coaches. And if it, unless, I mean, like if a coach like needs, I went to film, for instance, I mean, you saw those images in the movie and we're here talking about uh, with, with people, everybody saw the movie. There are those images in, with uh, Gloria Viseras in, in Spain. And mm -hmm. there is this young man who helps those young uh, girls. They are like 10 years old, nine, between nine and 12 kind of, and he touched them. Yes, and he can, he may I touch remember that. Their, their hip, he may touch their, 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 their back, even their bottom. Uh, I suspect that though, I'm not sure. But even if he does it, there is no issue. Because he does it and it's clear, it's clean. He does it when it's necessary, because it's necessary. He helped them to, in, to, 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 to jump and to, and, to, yeah. and, and to lean on their feet and everything. And I don't know how to say, I don't know how to express it, but it's, it's clear, it's obvious. Because he's a professional and because he's, he has been checked before, he's checked by, by, by the direction because the parents are allowed to have a look I, I, I was able to. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a global uh, global environment. Uh, that's the first part of the answer, and the other part is that I think why not like making a list of what is allowed or not. We have. I mean, we must not be ashamed of this. What is allowed or not? Like showers. Uh, if you're like uh, 20 years old with kid of 12, is it allowed? Or 18, 12 allowed? 16, 12 allowed? What is allowed or not? We have to to make a list and, and talk about it with a parents association, with an NSPCC, for instance, in the UK, with uh, uh, associations like like uh, like the one of Paul, or the one of Karen, and so on. And the people have the, uh, okay, let's, you know, let's work on it. Let's do this and let's say what is allowed or not. 
and and and, and what is even more difficult is that sometimes it can change uh, things that could be allowed 10 or 20 years ago and everybody felt felt all right about it and today it's not can, can I just say, you know, the policies and procedures and the law are there for a reason. And, and Paul has said it, you know, quite a few times. You know, they're there for the reason. Read them, you know. I mean, that's all in there. And if you're ethically following the policies and procedures and the law of that organization and that club and boundaries, then there is... I mean, that's what they're there for. Back again to, you know, people that want to abuse children go to sports to have access to children. They're not interested in policies and procedures or boundaries. They don't have any. So they will push past that. But if, this is why it's so important to, to, to follow and go as Paul says, the organizations that have these in place. But it's also back again to communication, to talking and speaking to parents, speaking to young people, speaking to, you know, athletes, everybody involved and breaking the silence around this. But policies, procedures and law are there. You know, there is an ethical way to behave and every organization and club has that in those policies and procedures. Thanks, Karen. Um, I have a, a couple of more questions and then we'll, I think we'll have to wrap up, otherwise we're going to run out of time. But um, So in terms of, we said that for the kids, it's very hard to speak. But if there are any kids in the audience today, what suggestions would you have for them? Maybe for them. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, you know, again, when we're talking about asking the child to speak up, we're not necessarily saying that they have to come forward and, and say exactly what's happening to them. But if we create an environment in our organisation where a child believes that they can say anything without, um, without being uh, sort of the chances of them, them progressing, being, being hampered. Now, it can be about anything, but if we create that environment, we have a, 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 a environment which, which they feel, I mean, it's all about they feel safe in. If they feel safe, they're more likely to, to say something. And it might not be, we're not always talking about the sexual abuse that mm -hmm. Karen and I endured. You know, they could be being bullied. They could be a parent that's, that's, that's you know, abusive on the touchline. So we have to, um, where, where children are concerned, is make them feel that they can speak. And if they do speak, their, um, their progression isn't going to be hampered uh, by anyone. Karen, do you have anything to add? I suppose, I mean, I want to say to if there is anybody, you know, here that is uh, watching and that is, um, you know, suffering abuse, and it's not just about sexual abuse, is, is what Paul said there, it's a much bigger picture, there's emotional, there's mental, there, there, there's physical, there's bullying, you know, it's a much bigger picture, it's not just about sexual abuse, but I just want to say to anyone that's watching, if something is happening to you, you know, you do not deserve this, this is not part of sports, this is not part of your training, and I would encourage you you please to reach out speak to somebody ask for help and, and, and you know if the first person isn't going to listen to you and is not going to believe you then please don't give up go and talk to somebody else go and speak to someone reach out and if they just keep until someone does because you have a right to be free from abuse and you have a right to be in sports and have fun and and joy and memories and, and your dreams come true you have a right to be safe in the sport that you're doing um and it's really important you know all i want to say is please don't give up don't ever ever give up if you need help please reach out and ask for it thank you thank you karen um and one last question for Pierre Emmanuel. Uh, do you feel that after releasing this documentary, the big sports federations have somehow reacted? Have somehow, are, are they more ready to listen? I think, um, I think the roots uh, of this phenomenon are very deep. And I think that what Karen said earlier is extremely important. It's not about only sexual abuse. I talked about only sexual abuse, but what I realized while I was working on this topic is that sexual abuse, one of the branches of a broader tree 
of emotional abu abuse, of physical abuse, sometimes economical abuse. So I think that what is at stake here is the respect of athletes, and especially in, in, the, in, the, in the high level and professional athletes. And this is why it doesn't change. Because if you, and this is why it's extremely hard to make things move regarding sexual abuse, is because if you want to change really the, 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 the root of this phenomenon in order to be efficient, you, talk, you, you change the root of the, 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 the place of the role of the athlete in a very large global economy. And I'm sorry to say, I don't know if Karen is and Paul will agree on this. It's only me talking, of course. That's a completely different opinion there, maybe. But I think that I'm sorry to say, but today, athletes are really just like Ian said, uh, Ian, uh, Ian Ackley said, cannon fodder. And this is what is at stake. And this is why I was making a joke early on when I turned on, on, on this Zoom Sorry, I was like, it's time for a revolution. It is time for athletes to, to, to gather all around the world, to gather and, and to say, stop. We are human beings. We are dedicating our lives to this passion, okay? We are starting extremely young. We are destroying our bodies sometimes. We, are, we, 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 we give up with, with families, with friends, with our normal youth, with, uh, with studies. We, we don't know what's gonna happen when we're gonna turn 30s, 30 years old because sometimes it's gonna be extremely hard, even if we are successful economically on plenty of aspects. This is what we're putting into our passion into sports. Why, what do you give to us in front of, of this involvement? How do you react? What do you do to, for us, to protect us, to help us? Athletes as, have to be, to be back at the top of the pyramid. Today, they're not, it's the other way around. Thank you very much, Pierre-Emmanuel, and uh, thank you all for a really amazing Q&A. You've been all very thorough and, I don't know how to say, <laughs> it's, I, I mean, having seen the documentary, um, this conversation is incredibly powerful. Um, so thank you all for being here. Unfortunately, I have to wrap up because this is the time we were allowed, but um, I hope we can follow you anywhere. Leave us your contact details. We'll make sure that they are shared with our audience. We've had a lot of questions today from the audience. I think there was a great interest in, uh, in the documentary. So it would be good to follow on with reachable. whatever because happens. We're, we're, we're reachable. We're reachable on Twitter. And I mean, talk to talk to us and talk to me. No, no worries. Mm. And last thing, um, we're not giving up, none of us. No. Because once once you start no. working on this, you 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 don't give up. So I'm working on a book. Actually, I'm finishing the book next week. It's called The Coach and the Child. Let us know because There's we'll more. be able to, you know, we'll be able to share it with obviously our uh, our audience, our followers. So please do keep in, do consider us as a, a platform. You Thank know, you. We, we obviously, you. we got in touch through our creative interest, mm -hmm. but this is, it goes beyond. Yeah. So thank you so much to all of you for endorsing this campaign, because they really need special people to go on. And I hope we can be of any help uh, in, now and in the future. So thank you thank so you. much to everyone here, to Karen, to Paul, to Pierre Emmanuel. It's been a very special moment for us. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's, a, it's thank important. You. It Hope matters. It matters. To you soon. For everyone. It matters. It really matters. Thank, thank you all. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.